Hello everyone, we made an introduction to genetic algorithm in the previous video and I explained the fundamentals of genetic algorithm, the flow, important steps, and operators like crossover or mutation. Now we will implement all in Python and remember our use case is a traveling salesman problem. So we will solve the problem with genetic algorithm. All code files and dataset will be available in the GitHub and I added the link into the description so you can check there. Let's start. First of all, let's look at our dataset. I created this dataset for this video series. Each row represents one point and each point has ID and coordinates. For example, first one, its ID is 1 and X value is 25 and Y value is 1050. As you see, we have totally 20 points. If you look at them in a map, you will see something like that. And this is our first point, also last point, because remember the requirements, path should end wherever it started. By the way, you can use other well-known datasets in your study, and I added a link for different datasets, you can check them too. Okay, now let's look at our codes. As you see, we have four different files. One of them is our training dataset, text file, and other ones are Python files. First of all, let's look at the main file, then we will see others. Firstly, we need to import genetic algorithm and chromosome files because we will use their functions. And these two libraries, NumPy and Matplotlib Pilot, they are only for drawing graphs. And after importing the libraries, we should define our parameters. Number of generations, it will be our iteration size and population size and this parameter shows total number of solutions in one generation. Also as you see I added comments to explain everything, therefore if you go github to check the code files you can also see these comments. Ok let's continue. And mutation rate is very important, usually 0.1 or 0.2 can be better and of course you should experiment different values for your problem dataset. Here, 0.2 means 20% probability of being a mutated for the chromosome. And the last parameter is our dataset. As you see, we import chromosome and use dataset variable here. And this variable contains locations in a Python list form. And this function is our major function, core function. Everything is inside of this function. Now, briefly, I will explain the flow and then I will explain each function one by one. For now, just focus on the general flow. As you see, we will give above parameters to this function, then we will create a new generation. First generation with initialization function, and cost for plot list is only for a graph, just cost generations graph, ignore this for now. Here, this for loop will manage everything. As you see, it will run as numbers of generations, and in each loop we will create a new generation. Of course, each generation will be gener created from the previous one, and we will see cost of a chromosome in each generation with this print command line. And we will add the best chromosome's cost to this list to plot a graph. Then this function will return a generation of solutions and a list for the cross generations graph. And that's all. These two functions are only for drawing graphs. And I will show them at the end. And as you see here, with this line, we will run genetic algorithm function and after generations by generations, we will obtain an optimal generation and find the best solution of that generation. Then we will draw two graphs based on the best solution and cost of generations. After explaining other files, everything will be more clear, so don't worry. Now let's look at the chromosome file. Here, we only need to import MET library for Euclidean distance calculations. Remember that our each point has id, x, and y values. With this class, we will create node objects. And actually, you can use different structures like dictionary or tuple, but I used node class structure in case the problem may have some further constraints. Then because of these constraints, maybe we need to define some functions inside the node class. But as I said, you can use other structures like dictionary or tuple. After that, we need to open dataset file and create a data list. Then we will use this list in our genetic algorithm functions. We cannot use text file for the operations. 
This is very simple. I get each line and extract the values, then I create it, not object, and add this object to the list. Here is important, if your data set contains 30 numbers, then n should be 30. We will create a distance matrix here, because we will need to know distances between different locations to make the genetic algorithm flow. Therefore, instead of calculating them whenever we need, we will create a matrix at the beginning and we will retrieve the distance information from this matrix. So it will be more efficient. If you look at the function, first of all I created a zero matrix. This matrix size will be n times n and it contains only zeros. Then with uh, two for loops, we will calculate Euclidean distances between each point using power and squared functions of math library. And as you see, we created a matrix using our data list here. But we need chromosome objects, not lists, because we will need to know each chromosome's distance, fitness values. Also, I want to see the chromosome sequence in a simple way. So we will create a chromosome class. And our init function needs a data list, not list. Then, thanks to this list, we will define other attributes. Self.chromosome will be exactly not list. And chromosome representation is only for displaying the chromosome sequence in a simple way. Normally, it's not necessary for the genetic algorithm. And the distance will be calculated using the matrix. And the total distance of each chromosome will be the cost of that chromosome. And the last one, fitness value, will be 1 divided by cost. Because remember, we want to minimize the cost and the during the selection phase, we will select chromosomes with higher fitness values. Okay, until here it was just showing general picture, now we will see genetic algorithm operators and steps with details. So let's open the genetic algorithm file. Here we need to import random and chromosome. And our first function is create a random list using not list. At the beginning, in the initialization phase, we will create random chromosomes. In other words, random solutions. But we have an important restriction here. Our first point should be always the beginning point. Other can be shuffled, but the first and the last point should be same. Therefore, we keep the start point of the node list as a start variable. Then we take uh, other part of the list and shuffle it randomly. At the end, we add start point to the beginning and to the end of the chromosome. Now randomly created and valid chromosome is ready. Other function is initialization function. As parameters, uh, we should give data list and population size. Firstly, we created an empty list. Then as much as population size, we will create random node lists. Of course, each list will be converted to chromosome object. Then chromosome objects will add to the initial population list. With this function, first generation, the initial population will be ready. And the next one, selection function, one of the most important phase of the genetic algorithm. Here I will use tournament selection method. Think that we organize a tournament, all chromosomes in the population can be a candidate. And randomly I selected four chromosomes and compete them to find their best one. That best one will be the winner of the tournament. So, as a beginning, I created randomly four integer numbers as ticket numbers. Then I picked four chromosomes based on these tickets from the population. In other words, ticket numbers is uh, ticket number is index of a population list. Then we will select the best one based on the fitness value and return the winner chromosome. That's the selection function. And the next one is the crossover function. Actually, here I defined three different crossover functions. We can use any of them. Uh, their input and output are in same format. Uh, I will explain all, but I used the third one here. Okay, let's look at the first one. And the first one is one point crossover. Remember, I showed this in the previous video. Firstly, we generate a random breakpoint. Then we divided the parent one and parent two chromosomes. First part of the child chromosome is same with the parent 1 until the breakpoint. Then I added the point uh, of parent 2 in order. Of course, be careful that after crossover, 
start and end points should be same. The second one, two points crossover is similar. Instead of one breakpoint, we created two different random points. The small one will be beginning point and the bigger one will be the end point. Then we will extract the points between begin and the end index of the parent one. They will be first part of the child chromosome. Then we will add the points of parent two in order at the end of child chromosome. By the way, probably you noticed that I used two parents and created two child chromosomes because I implement same procedure twice. In the second one, parent one is parent two and parent two is parent one. So you don't have to do this, but uh, you can create one child using two chromosomes in each crossover operation, of course. What I did is good for the complexity because I ran the selection process and divided two times. Okay, let's see the mixed ones, the third one. Uh, I didn't see something like that before, to be honest, because uh, I checked the literature and I didn't see something like that. Maybe this is a novel implementation, I'm not sure. Uh, let me explain. Again, I used two parents and created two child chromosomes, but I didn't implement the same procedure twice. I implement two different crossovers for each child in this function. First one is again, I created two random points, then I extracted from the first point of the parent one to the beginning breakpoint. Then I added points of parent two in order until end breakpoint. Lastly, I extracted last part of the parent one from the end breakpoint to the last point, and I added this part to the child chromosome. However, for the second child, I implemented two points crossover like the in the previous function. As a summary, I created two child chromosomes using two parent chromosomes. Now, another important genetic algorithm operator is mutation operator. Mutation function is very simple. Just generate random two index, then swap these locations, swap these points. Don't forget that this operator is crucial because it provides a solution diversity and prevents some stuck in local maximum or minimum. And the find best function checks uh, all chromosomes in a generation and returns the best one in terms of cost and distance. And the last one, create a new generation function. As parameters, we will give previous generation and mutation rate. At the beginning, before creating a complete new generation, we find the best chromosome of the previous generation and directly add to the new generation. This is called as elitism. Because we keep the best of each generation and transfer to the next one. Then in this for loop, we will create a new chromosome in each loop. Firstly, we select two parent chromosomes with our selection functions, then create new two child chromosomes with crossover mix function. This function returns not list, so we created chromosome objects here. Then if randomly generated number is lower than mutation rate, we implement mutation operation to child one. If not, we will pass this operator and add these two child chromosomes to the new generation. Then return the new generation. This will be a list which contains chromosome objects. And that's all. Now let's run main function and see genetic algorithm for TSP, traveling salesman problem. As you see, cost of chromosomes decreased in each generation and at the beginning, change was dramatic, but then difference is getting small and stable after some iterations. If you look at the graph, you can see a typical genetic algorithm progress. Let's look at our path graph. As you see, we obtained a clear path for these locations. The path started from the first point, number one, and visited all others and return to the first one again. This is one of the optimal solutions, but it may not be the best one. For example, this path seems uh, not the best one actually, but with this ef efficiency, we have nearly the best one. You can implement some local optimization techniques after obtaining this. For example, you can use two op technique at the end of the process. 
and it's quite better than trying all combinations of these locations. And that's all. If you have any question, you can add as a comment. I think if you understand the general flow and operators, you can implement genetic algorithm to your optimization problem with Python. Thanks for listening.